Just let me hear some of that rock and roll music Any old way you choose it Got a backbeat, you can't lose it Any old time you use it It's gotta be rock and roll music If you wanna dance with me Portions of the day's programming are reproduced by means of electrical transcriptions or tape recordings We're having a party Dancing to the music Played by the DJ On the radio Weary boys set to laughing On the radio once Freedom, freedom, freedom Hear the talk beat of the DJ Can't understand just what Quiet, numbskulls, I'm broadcasting. Turn up the radio. This is Rock and Roll Radio. Come on, let's rock and roll with the remote. Sunday night, 6 o'clock. My name is Jim Ryan. Thank you for joining me here on AM 1420 WIMS, the talk of the South Shore. You've got the Rock and Roll Radio program tonight till 7, so welcome. Thanks for coming back. Uh, had some great guests over the last few weeks, and tonight is no exception, so we're going to get right to it. Uh, you've heard him perform on this show before. Uh, tonight, not performing live, but uh, talking about the blues with me here as he gears up for a benefit he has uh, this coming Saturday, September 13th, at Rose's Lounge. Visit roseslounge.com to uh, pick up tickets for the Sean Costello benefit featuring Tom Holland in the Shuffle Kings. So uh, Tom Holland, again, performed on this program in the past. He is here in the studio and he'll be joining me live after we hear a track from his most recent effort uh, from last year's album, uh, No Fluff, Just the Stuff. I'm going to play right now a song called More Things Change, and this song features on piano Mr. Marty Salmon, who plays uh, keyboards for Buddy Guy, as well as uh, Mr. John Primer on guitar, Money Waters' last guitar player. Uh, Tom used to tour as a member of the John Primer band. We're going to talk about all of this stuff coming up. Uh, stick around. Tom Holland tonight until 7 o'clock here on the Rock and Roll Radio program. Temptation's always out there Every night and every day Around every corner Every time a different name
go from his second solo effort no fluff just the stuff tom holland with his backing band the shuffle kings more things change right here on the rock and roll radio program well uh very pleased to welcome to the show tonight uh mr tom holland who joins me here for i think it's the third or fourth time tom it's several times now but uh tom is gearing up for a benefit he has six days from tonight uh saturday september 13th the sean costello benefit yes yes at uh, rosa's lounge 3420 west armitage Chicago, Illinois. All right. Well, well, thank you for joining us, sir. So uh, I figured we could talk blues tonight. You know, we have until 7 o'clock when Jim Morocco takes over. So we've yeah. got time. Plenty of time. Plenty of time. As, uh, as, as Irma Thomas once said, time is on our side. Exactly. All right. So let me ask you this. You and I, you and I are related. We'll throw that out, you know, first and foremost. Yes. <laughs> Nepotism is alive and well here in the <laughs> WIMS studio. But uh, how exactly, because, because I know what's on the radio, you and I are of, of a similar age, I know what was on the radio while we, while we were growing up, uh, I, I know what kind of music our peers were listening to in, in grade school, high school, whatever, what have you, where exactly did you come to this deep appreciation of the blues? Uh, it's on my dad's record collection, you know, it's, you know, it was one of those things where you know, it was around the house, whether whether or not he was doing it intentionally. But, you know, when I decided I wanted to play guitar, I, you know, like every other young kid, I begged and begged and begged. <laughs> and then they got me one. And, of course, I looked at it for about two months. I was and just going to say. <laughs> and then put it, put it under the bed. And then, you know, and then when I started taking it seriously, you know, I started playing blues. And because that's what I always heard in my head. And. All right, now, now I, I had read, done, done some reading. You know, I put the pop-up books down and did, did some reading leading up to this interview. Um, I had read that when you got that first guitar, it was with the hopes that you could be Edward Van Halen. Is there, oh, is there, yeah. any, is there any truth to that rumor? That, 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 was, <laughs> that, was, that was what I was aiming for, and then I realized... See, I, I was giving you the opportunity to, dis, to dispel that rumor, but... Yeah, well... <laughs> But go I, ahead. I, I could, but you know, but then I'd be a liar. Well, I'd be mean, growing up on the south side of Chicago. Classic rock now was <laughs> the was the theme it, of the day, and, and was the theme of the thing then too. Like, oh even, yeah, even Van Halen on those same stations yeah. that are playing the classic rock now. So Van Halen, Eddie was the first. Yeah, I saw 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 Eddie Van Halen on MTV, and I just said, "That's what I want to do." Okay. I got a guitar and realized my fingers will never move that fast. What was the what was the track? Do you do you remember which Van Halen track it was that you saw uh, him perform? I have it, it might have been some of the early stuff. I don't remember. <laughs> okay. Might might have been Jump or Eruption, one of those two. All right, so I remember being at a at a family Christmas party and you were wearing a Stevie Ray Vaughan t-shirt and at the time I had no clue who Stevie Ray Vaughan was. But is that one of the earlier, at least, blues influences? Because oh yeah, yeah. especially back on the radio then, we that's that's, that's a blues yeah. artist we were hearing. Yeah, yeah, that was you know, Stevie Ray at that time. You know, was he was you know he was the bee's knees, as they say. <laughs> they say that yes. At they least said they, that in the fifties. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I mean, it's you know, Stevie Ray was you know one of the first guys I listened to and. You know, and then I went, you know, I, I started getting into Stevie Ray and I started going back into who influenced him. And that's what put me into the blues thing. All right. So when it comes to dad's collection, which was some of the first exposure to blues, I take it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. What what were some of the artists he had in his collection that you were discovering <sighs> on your own? Kind of pretty much. He had all kinds of everything from classical to Jimi Hendrix to blues, jazz. You know, I, I don't remember what was the first one that kind of made me turn my head and go, oh, I like that. You know, he used to, you know, he'd make mixtapes back in the day and then Every, well, everybody mix did, really. CDs and all that, you know, and it's like, you know, I never knew what was on it, 
Okay. It just sounded good, and you know, it kind of got ingrained in my head. All right. So, so from a guitar standpoint, and we're talking mid nineties. Yeah. Is yeah. that is that about the right mid, time? Mid to early nineties, early mid nineties. Who who are some of the early influences? Because when I when I hear your style, when I when I hear you play, and it's been a lot. You know, you you don't play in an overly flashy way. No, Somebody no. who cites, you know, Eddie Van Halen. Yeah, yeah. You you don't play in that manner no, in any no. way, shape, or form. You you play in what I consider to be the Chicago blues, which yeah, is yeah. who who are some of these? You know, it's, you know when I you know you know Stevie Ray was the first one, and then I went back and you know got into the BB Kings and you know Albert King and Freddie King. And you know, Muddy Waters and you know, Howlin' Wolf. Those were those were probably the ones that did it for me. And you know, because I've never you know I've never been into the whole Flash thing, and because right. my fingers don't move that fast. <laughs> okay, so so you start to listen to some of these guitar players, and and you get your own guitar, and and you start to did you kind of teach yourself, or did you take lessons? Or like, where did this start? I took lessons for a while and I had been hearing the stuff in my head and, you know, I, I took lessons and, you know, got the basics down and then it all kind of just started making sense from there and pretty much everything by ear. All right, and uh, AM 1420 WIMS, listening to the Rock and Roll Radio program this evening until 7 p.m. My guest tonight, Mr. Tom Holland. Tom Holland, who's been on this program a couple of times over the last few years. You may have heard Tom before, but uh, has performed, has, has played a guitar on the last two Grammy-nominated albums by James Cotton. That is what we're talking about this evening, uh, the blues. But, uh, okay, so so you're playing guitar, you're, you're learning it. Where What's the next step? Because obviously the, the club's in Chicago, but you're not old enough to play those. So do you uh, sneak uh, in, or where, oh yeah, where does was, it go from there? I, I started sneaking in, you know, maybe 17, 18. Okay. And, you know, it was one of those things where, you know, as long as I had a guitar on my back, you know, they kind of gave me the stink eye, but they were just like, <laughs> well, all right, just don't do anything stupid. Okay. Uh, do we do we want to name these clubs or should we let them uh, remain? Honestly, <laughs> I, I, I don't even remember half of them because okay. they, they, they were little neighborhood joints on the south side where... So we're not talking the places on the north side where you play now necessarily? No, no, no. At what point did we get to those clubs? And when I when I reference those clubs, I'm talking Blues on Halstead. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, the House of Blues back, back porch stage is, is one you do regularly. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, so some of these simple places. You know, I, I started hitting the north side clubs when I was about 19, 20, when I was working with John Primer. Okay. Well, well, you know, I wasn't old enough to be in there, but I was in the band, so they never really, they never really gave me any kind of problem, and they figured, well, if he's in the band, he must be old enough to be in here. When it comes to the first paying gig, like who who gave you the first really the big break? I uh, probably John Primer. You okay. Know, he, you know, I used to, I used to go see him at the checkerboard. Me and Marty Salmon. Uh, buddy Martin, guys, guys, buddy guys, keyboard player. Okay, and it was right around the time that Junior Wells died that Marty and I started hanging out there a lot. And you know, I you know Marty was always more of a New Orleans funk piano player. That that's the you stuff can, he liked to do. You could hear that in his playing. Now, oh yeah, sure. yeah. And you know, Primer was playing Sundays and Mondays at the checkerboard and you know i i you know i basically was like all right we go down there i'll buy you some drinks that way we can go and you know he you know he he hung out for a f- couple of them but that wasn't really his thing so i started going back on my own and after a couple months of sitting in you know john's harmonica player at the time couldn't do a gig and you know, it was a Monday night. There was nobody there, and he just kind of looked at me and said, I got a gig on Thursday. Can you do it? And I was like, yeah, sure, no problem. And I was with John after that for two years. So John Primer, Muddy, yeah. Muddy Waters' yeah, last Muddy, guitar Muddy player. Yeah, Muddy Waters' last guitar player. Played with Magic Slim for 14 years. And I, and I know Magic Slim is one of your favorites. We'll, we'll get to Magic oh, yeah. Slim, but... Um, 
so the checkerboard anybody even even people who aren't major blues fans know the checkerboard from seeing on PBS the last six or eight months that that special that keeps consistently oh yeah yeah, yeah. Of... pledge drive it means it's muddy waters <laughs> and the rolling stones at the checkerboard I, I I never got to make it to the checkerboard at that time the checkerboard owned by buddy guy toward the end right pre legends was yeah it was I think he owned it up until right after the whole Rolling Stones showed up at a muddy gig thing. Oh, so we're talking like eighties. He yeah. He let that I go. think he he. I don't remember the story of how he ended up getting bought out, but I think it was middle eighties, and he was, you know, he was on the he started getting out on the road a lot and wasn't there, and then his partner bought him out and. Was it as great? I mean, because it's renowned. I mean, now almost kind of in lore. Yeah, I mean... Was it as great a venue as it's cracked up to be? I had a lot of fun there. (laughs) That wasn't the question. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I I think you and I both would have a lot of fun at at a lot of these venues. The question was, is it a good venue? You know, it was... You know, when when I played there, I was pretty much the last of the checkerboard generation, as I like to call it. Sure. You know, it's like I was one of the last bunch of guys that went through there and learned you know took your lumps learning in a in a little dingy bar where nobody ever made that much money Mm -hmm. but you know back in the day you know i mean it was that was one of the places to be what were back in the day because we're familiar with the places that exist now which is Blues on Hall said, though that's yeah. been there for a long time, and Kingston Mines and, and Buddy Guys Legends, you know, in its in its new location, as well as on the old one down the street yeah, on yeah. State. What are some of these other venues now that, that are gone that you remember coming up? Oh, a lot of them were on the south side, and I don't remember much of the names. It was, you know, a lot of the times it was knock on the door, <laughs> and they kind of slit the, you know, they put the little slat back, look at you, look up and down. and So literally, like, I mean, because people have in their head, like, that idea is kind of a speakeasy type thing. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, it was a, a lot of those places on the south side, you know, number one, a, a young white kid showing up at the right. door raises ten shades of red flags for the club owners thinking, well, this is going to turn into a raid or why is this kid standing at our door wanting to come in? That's something I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, Tom Holland, my guest here on the Rock and Roll Radio program, AM 1420 WIMS, the talk of the South Shore. Jim Morocco takes over at 7 o'clock. Till then, talking blues, playing blues with Mr. Tom Holland. Tom performs with his own band, the Shuffle Kings. You can catch them uh, just about once a month over at uh, Blues on Halstead in the city of Chicago. Tom also does a lot of uh, assorted venues as uh, a member of the James Cotton Band. But you you brought it up. I I was going to get to it eventually, but let's get into it now. Kind of the the race thing. You know, when people, I think, you know, think about race as far as blues, it's in terms of what the the bluesman who came before you had to deal with coming up in the South. You coming up in the 90s as a bluesman and performing for almost 20 years now with John Primer, with James Cotton, with Eddie Clearwater. In reverse, how did that work for you playing these clubs, be it on the South side, the North side, whatever the case might be? You know, it was, you know, it was with the band leaders, it was never a thing of, you know, you're a little white boy trying to play our music. If you could play, you could play. Yeah, it was, you know, with the band leaders, they didn't care if you were black, white, purple, blue, whatever. As long as you could play. It, you know, if they saw something in you that, you know, that said he wants to learn how to do this, they were, you know, they'd welcome you with open arms. You know, a lot of a lot of times, though. You know, I mean, I mean, I still get it to this day, where doing gigs, people come up to me afterwards, and I didn't know a white guy like that could play <laughs> how you play. Okay, but I've never experienced it with the with the band leaders that I've worked with. I I would think if you've never experienced it in twenty years of playing with the guys that you've played, I would think that's a pretty good indicator. Yeah, I mean, it's 
it's definitely the elephant in the room. But it's never been a problem with the venues because that was that that was my there, curiosity. You know, it was you know, it's to a certain extent. You know, going to Europe, it's still a little bit like that. Okay. Where if you're not, if you're not, you know, from the South or you're not black, and you're playing blues, that's you can't do it. Let's play a song, and let's come. Let's come back, and we'll we'll talk more about the blues here on AM fourteen twenty WIMS. Let's play a track from your most recent album. This is No Fluff, Just the Stuff, the name of the album, and the track we're gonna play is, I believe, waiting on any other shoe to drop. Yes, sir. All right, let's do that right now, and we'll come back and we'll talk more blues with Tom Holland. You've got the Rock and Roll Radio program here on WIMS.
waiting on the other shoe to drop, the track from Tom Holland and the Shuffle Kings here on AM 1420 WIMS. Rock and Roll Radio program until 7 o'clock. Don't go anywhere. Jim LaRocco takes over then. But uh, my guest this evening, Mr. Tom Holland, kind enough to grace us with his presence once again. Third time? Fourth time? I think. I believe it's the third time. <laughs> okay. Uh, not, no guitar in hand no, today. No, no, it's... We're just talking blues. A la carte. <laughs> You have to pay extra for that. <laughs> you have to pay extra for the guitar. I gotta pay for your parking then or something. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind for next time. <laughs> but you just heard Tom with his band, the Shuffle Kings, and I uh, want to point out that Tom Holland and the Shuffle Kings have a benefit concert coming up uh, six days from tonight, Saturday the 13th, over at Rose's Lounge on the near northwest side. Uh, Tom Holland and the Shuffle Kings performing with Billy Boy Arnold and more. This is a benefit for uh, Sean Costello, so visit roseslounge.com to purchase tickets 20 bucks gets you in the door not a bad deal and it goes to a good cause again that's Tom Holland and the Shuffle Kings you just heard them uh, go check them out live Saturday night the 13th at Roses Lounge in Chicago alright we've, we've, we've talked about blues and we, we've talked about your progression you know finding the guitar finding your way as, as a bluesman on the south side of Chicago all these types of things you travel now obviously you, you've performed with James Cotton, you've performed with John Primer and Eddie Clearwater, and you've done a lot of traveling. So my question to you is this. In your travels via the festival circuit, via blues clubs, and outside the United States, Chicago likes to consider itself a blues town. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is Chicago still as great a blues town as its reputation seems to indicate that it is, and as people here seem to still consider it. Is Chicago still a good blues town? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. People in Memphis, New Orleans probably will be all kinds of no, 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 but... Memphis specifically was the other one I had in mind. You know, it's you know it's one of those things where, you know, Chicago was where everybody migrated to from the south. Here in Detroit, but Detroit's scene has not been... Well, Detroit in general has yeah, not been. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, you know, that's the one thing. The Chicago scene has always been thriving, and, I mean, still to this day it is. Is it thriving? Like, because, like, you obviously make a living. Yeah, yeah. Playing the blues yeah. as, oh, as, yeah. as your job. And I mean, it's it's not thriving like it was, say, 20 years ago. A lot of the clubs that used to be around back then have all closed and gone by the wayside. But, you know, the clubs that are still open, you know, it's it's still, you know, it's still all blues all the time. You know, it's, you know, it's gone through some changes, but, I mean, that goes without saying with everything. I read an interview that... Somebody asked you were uh, what you loved about the blues, and you said your quote was, "The blues is truth." Oh yeah, yeah. What about what exactly about the blues is it that's truth? What is what does that mean? You know, it's it's something where you know, the blues is the truth. I mean, it's it's basically about everyday life. Whatever you know, everybody goes through something at some point that might give them the blues, might make them happy, might make them sad. But you know, blues at the end of the day is you know, it's the story of life. We left off before that last track with John Primer, and John Primer kind of taught you how to play. Oh yeah, slide yeah. guitar is that yeah, is that yeah. true? Pretty pretty much, it's John's fault that I'm out here doing what I'm doing today. <laughs> okay, and 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 I and I frequently remind him of that every time I see him, and we have a good laugh about it. And he still does. He still does once a month at Blues and Halstead. I believe, yeah, right? Yeah, about yeah. once a month. You know, and he's you know he he works buddy guys every couple months. Does he still tour? Oh yeah, yeah. He's uh, nationally. Oh yeah, he's okay. He goes overseas a lot. You know, he goes to Europe a bunch, a couple times a year, and South America a couple times a year. So you move from John Primer's band to Eddie Clearwater's band, yeah. is that right? Yeah. So Eddie, Eddie Clearwater. So you're playing for him now. You you've played for Muddy Waters, last guitar player, yeah, John yeah. Primer, and you're you're moving on now to Eddie the Chief Clearwater and his band. At the time, unfortunately, no longer there in Wigger Park. 
uh, Reservation Blues, yeah, yeah, Eddie Clearwater's bar, and I and I know you had kind of an integral part. Yeah, yeah, I sun, was, Sunday nights. I there? was I was doing Sunday nights there for maybe two three years when we weren't on the road. What was the what what was the progression from John Primer's band to Eddie Clearwater's band? Like, what did you? What sticks out for you about moving from one to the other? Oh uh, well, you know when when I when I left uh, when I left John's band, you know it was it you know it was one of those things where Eddie Clearwater, you know, I think his bass player at the time had called me because we had gotten to know each other through various channels, and his Eddie's guitar player just quit and. John at the time wasn't working very much, so you know I I didn't really want to have to leave John's band, but it was uh you know I I, I needed to make some money. Sure, <laughs> you know that's I, life. I, I, I like to eat, so I <laughs> I, I had to go where the money is. <laughs> right. Well, so Reservation Blues and you you get to it was that the kind of first gig where where you had that. Uh, residency opportunity on a yeah, weekly basis. Yeah. Like, so how important is that as a developing blues musician to have that showcase, but not not just a showcase, but that ability to kind of test things out. You know, in, fr- in front of a crowd, it's 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 good to have, and you know, unfortunately, you don't really get much of that anymore. Right. You know, at least yeah, I mean, maybe maybe in rock or jazz they may do that, but. You know, blues, you know, blues club, you know, the blues is, you know, it's that kind of being able to incubate what you're doing and just nurture it along at a, at a regular clip, you know, week in and week out doesn't really happen much anymore. So we, we've talked a lot about you, you know, playing, playing a primers band, playing an Eddie Clearwater's band. We just heard a track from your from your band, the Shuffle Kings. It's been about ten years, bet- about ten years between yeah, it was ten years between the first record and the new record. So ten years between solo projects, essentially. Yeah, yeah. You know, what is it? What's it like for you as a musician? And not to say you're playing rhythm with James Cotton because you're obviously yeah. not, but to be, you know, playing to go all from, the guitar <laughs> to go. Kind of from as as a side man to doing your own projects, you know, what's what's it like for you making that transition from one to the other? For me, it was never really making a transition because I've you know in between you know I've always had a band with whoever I've been playing with out on the road. Okay, you know it's you know it's it was just okay. Well, I'm off the road with James. Time to go do some gigs with my band. Sure. And so, I mean, it was, you know, I never really looked at it as a transition between being the side man and being the front man. You know, it was it was always just a thing of just one gig to the next. My guest this evening here on the Rock and Roll Radio program, Mr. Tom Holland. Tom has performed on the last two Grammy-nominated albums by James Cotton. He's giving me a thumbs up here. You, you can't see it, but he... He's, he's fiending excitement. But uh, performed on the last two Grammy-nominated albums by James Cotton. Uh, performs also frequently, especially in the South Side. So for those of you listening here on WIMS as opposed to online, throughout the world, Tom, people are listening throughout the world. Well, hello, world. <laughs> but, uh, you know, especially on the South Side, you guys do a lot of gigs. Yeah. yeah. Especially down on Western Avenue. Yeah. I haven't, haven't, haven't been down there lately, but that's just because summertime they kind of rain everything back because nobody's around. Well, for a full list of those dates, visit TomHollandShuffleKings.com. Uh, the band also with a Facebook presence and all the dates listed there as well. And again, when we keep talking about six days from tonight, September 13th, the Sean Costello Benefit at Roses on the northwest side. Armitage Avenue, visit RosesLounge.com for tickets to that. Well, well so obviously... You know, your your duties with James Cotton, you know, years ago with John Primer and Eddie Clearwater it dictated that you be out on the road. So it took yeah. 10 years oh, between yeah. studio efforts. Uh, are we going to are we looking at another 10 years before before another I, I Shuffle Kings not. album? I okay. hope not. <laughs> oh, I hope not. No, no. Okay. 
Oh, I, I would imagine your band is right there with you. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, they've they've already started started in on one. Are we doing the next one? Well, uh, let let's talk about your time here with James Cotton, because I would think that might be the project people know you certainly the most for. Yeah, yeah. You know, the last the last two albums, especially the last one, because yeah. because there was kind of a an impressive guest roster on that last album. Mm-hmm. Um, we we've talked about that here on the on this show a bit, like when that album was yeah, released yeah. about a year and a half ago. But what's it like for you working? And and I know you weren't necessarily in the studio yeah. with with a lot of these guests. But what's it like for you playing with a lot of these people? You know, Greg Allman's on that album. Keb yeah. Moe's on that album. What's it like playing? on a recording with with some of these guys I imagine you grew up listening to. Oh yeah, yeah, you know, I mean honestly if I look at it going, "Oh, I just I, I'm going to get to play with so and so or Greg Allman or Warren Haynes or this and that." I wouldn't be able to do anything. <laughs> Have you gotten to speak with or play with any of these guys that that guessed it on the album? Have you have you done anything with them on the road? I've actually um with a a charity that I work with out of Columbus, Ohio, uh, Project Blues. Uh, the previous uh, 2013, we had Keb Mo as our headliner for the the show we do every year. So you know, I got to you know spend some time with him and you know, you know, get to know him a little bit. And you know, he 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 was he found it funny that you know we're all the way in Columbus, Ohio, and he just found out that. One of the guys that played on the record he played on with James Cotton is sitting right next to him. <laughs> Isn't that the way it always seems to oh, go? Oh, yeah, yeah. And, you know, we were in Australia earlier this year with Cotton, and Warren Haynes was down and playing the same festival with Government Mule. Okay. And, you know, the first day we were there, Warren was there, and he, you know, he came to go say hello to James, and, you know, so we ended up, you know, we took our bunch of selfies and put it all on Facebook, you know, and, but, you know, it's, uh, you know, we sat around and, you know, just, you know, talked shop for a while, you know, and haven't, haven't, haven't had a chance to see Greg Allman yet, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, better act quick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let's, uh, let's, let's play another track and we'll come back. I want to talk more about James Cotton. I also yeah. want to talk more about you have a gig coming up. Saturday night the 13th, you're doing a benefit at Rose's on the yep. near northwest side of Chicago, Armitage and Western. Uh, Armitage and Kimball. Armitage and Kimball. So, Rose'sLounge.com, and that's, I believe, where the tickets are being sold. So, yeah. You've, you've got this solo gig coming up. It's, um, it's going to be my band with uh, Billy Boy Arnold. Okay. Who, you know, he had a bunch of hits back in the 50s. Played with Bo Diddley, you know he's, he's one of the. He's uh, not bad. <laughs> no, he's he's one of the uh, living legends of the blues, and I believe we'll also have Jody Williams coming out because Jody was a big inspiration to Sean when Sean was coming up, and it's also going to be Felix Reyes, uh, Dave Herrero, Kate Moss. And uh, some friends of mine from uh, the Columbus area, Long Tall Deb. Well, so this is September 13th at Roses. We'll talk more about that. Go go find Roses online. Find yep. find the Rock and Roll Radio program on Facebook. We'll get you all the details for this show. Uh, six days from today, Saturday the 13th, Tom Holland uh, performs as part of that Sean Costello benefit. But Tom, you just mentioned Billy Boy Arnold, who's performing with you that night at Roses, so let's continue now with him. More from Tom Holland after this one from Billy Boy Arnold right here on the Rock and Roll Radio program. Early in the morning, about to break a day. That's my baby when I Late at night, 
makes your little baby feel just right Tell me now, baby, what you're trying to do Trying to love me and some other man too I wish you would, right here on the Rock and Roll Radio program. Billy Boy Arnold, part of a benefit uh, with my guest this evening, Tom Holland. That's six days from tonight at Rosa's Lounge. You can find Tom on Facebook, Tom Holland and the Shuffle Kings. Also, visit their website for more tour dates, TomHollandShuffleKings.com. You know, we uh, we just heard a track from Billy Boy Arnold, so let's, let's kind of recap. You've got a show coming up September 13th. Yep, yeah, at uh, Rosa's Lounge. Benefit for Sean Costello. Yeah, the uh, it's the a benefit for the Sean Costello uh, Bipolar Research Fund, and it'll be it'll be my band, Tom Holland and the Shuffle Kings, with Billy Boy Arnold, Jody Williams, Felix Reyes, Dave Herrero, Long Tall Deb, and Colin John, Richard Rosenblatt, Kate Moss, Dick Sherman will be the MC, and there may even be some special guests. Special guests are always a good thing, so... Definitely, definitely. One more reason for you to purchase a ticket. Uh, we'll post all the information on our Facebook page, the Rock and Roll Radio program. Uh, you can also find it at uh, roseslounge.com, I believe. Roses on the near northwest side, Armitage and Kimball. So check that out. Uh, six days from tonight, September 13th. Tom Holland, part of that benefit. But, uh, you know, we, we kind of left off. We were, we were talking about James Cotton. You specifically as a member of the James Cotton Band. A guy I wanted to ask you about who, who passed away recently, who worked with James Cotton a bit, Johnny Winter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, your your thoughts on Johnny Winter? You, you know, ever, did you ever run across him in your travels? Oh, yeah. We, we did, last couple years with James, we did a number of gigs where, you know, it was billed as James Cotton and Johnny Winter or Johnny Winter and James Cotton. You know, we so it was like a double bill, and, you know, I got to spend a lot of time, you know, after the shows, just, you know, talking with Johnny and, you know, just hanging out and, you know, talking shop. And, you know, I mean, it was it was a lot of fun, and, you know. But, you know, Johnny Winter, we, we talked a little bit earlier about about kind of the race thing, especially in reverse yeah. Oh, yeah. With, with you as a, as a white blues guy coming up on the south side you know johnny winter nicknamed ridiculously the albino bluesman yeah oh yeah yeah you know had had that as rough as anybody but certainly overcame it oh yeah <laughs> I mean, one yeah. of those one of those guys you hear his guitar playing and, and nothing else really matters yeah. at that point you know and and you know and and that was the thing with johnny winter was you know his, you know, his his head was always in the blues, regardless of rock and roll hoochie coo or the rock stuff he did. You know, he for years always said he's a blues man first, and you know, so, you know, it it, it you know, it was one of those that always kind of made me laugh. Where you know you'd have your fog hat doing a blues record <laughs> or. 
Aerosmith doing a blues record that oh, they're yeah. getting <laughs> back to their blues right, roots. Right, their roots. And, yeah, yeah. No, they're trying you to know, make a buck. And, and then you've got Johnny Winter, who was a bona fide rock guitar god. Yes. Who was always, you know, he was always knee deep in the blues. And, you know, it's like he made his statement with the rock stuff and, you know, you know, you hear a lot of these blues guys that go do other things. At some point, they all say they want to go out like they came in, play in the blues. And that's what Johnny Winter did. 70 Johnny Winter years. <laughs> you know, we joke about dog years. <laughs> 70 Johnny Winter years, I think, is like 150 years of a normal Person. Oh yeah, yeah. Seventy Johnny Winter years. That's that's some living right there. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, last two albums you've done with with uh, James Cotton, nominated for a Grammy, at the family Christmas party. Never thought I'd be talking to you about being a blues nominated record with Cindy Lauper. <laughs> being nominated alongside Cindy Lauper for a Grammy, <laughs> especially in the blues category. <laughs> well, yeah, of all people. Um, you know what's what's that whole what's that whole thing like? Because that's too straight, right? Two two Grammy nominated albums you've played on. Yeah, I mean it's. I just went in and played on it. I so you know, didn't? Did you go to the Grammy ceremony? Oh no! I know the answer to this, but no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Performing on an album that was nominated for a Grammy alongside Cyndi Lauper, I think an odd moment. And and you've described for me, we've had some interesting conversations off the air. Uh, you you regaled us with one a couple of years ago about Robbie Krieger. What's one of the stranger moments you can think of here performing alongside an awful lot of different artists over your 20 years as a blues man? Probably the strangest one was before I started working with John Primer, I was doing some gigs on the South Side with uh, this guitar player named L.V. Banks, okay. who's since passed. But, you know, I was 18 years old, maybe, and he had a gig every Tuesday during the summer of whatever year that was where he played in a beauty salon. So, you know, Marty Salmon, Buddy Guy's keyboard player, was playing piano on the gig. And, you know, I started tagging along, and then after a few Tuesdays, LV just decided, well, I'm going to hire him too. <laughs> okay. So, never, never a bad thing. No, no. But, you know, so we played a whole summer at 64th and Halstead at the My Inheritance Beauty Salon. <laughs> okay. From 7 to 10. And, <laughs> and, you know, the funny part was Marty and I both are not old enough to drink, but the owner back, of... Back yeah, then, anyway. Back then, yeah. Yeah. Did still, still not old enough to drink. Not that, not that still, that stopped you then. Or no, now, no, but yeah. The uh, the owner of the beauty salon, whenever we'd show up after the first week, she's like, you know, they were like, well, what do you boys like to drink? Gatorade, Kool Aid, and we're just like, well, <laughs> beer is good. You know, we'd show up every Tuesday, and they'd have a case of Heineken or Beck's, or and the last Tuesday we did. They finally figured out that the white boys were Irish, so they had Guinness for us. <laughs> um, I guess this evening has been Mr. Tom Holland. Tom performs on the guitar as a member of the James Cotton Blues Band. Uh, performed on the last two Grammy-nominated albums from James Cotton, Giant and Cottonmouth Man. Uh, you can visit Tom on Facebook, certainly a, uh, a presence there. Uh, Tom, what's the website? www.tomhollandshuffleKings.com well, there you go, Tom Holland and the Shuffle Kings. You heard some music from Tom Holland and the Shuffle Kings earlier. Go catch them live, part of the Sean Costello Benefit, alongside Billy Boy Edwards on September 13th. That's this coming Saturday night at Roses. Tickets for that on sale at roseslounge.com. Well, that's all the time we've got. My name is Jim Ryan. Thank you for joining me here this evening on the Rock and Roll Radio Program. Visit us on Facebook, the Rock and Roll Radio Program. We'll post the audio from this. We'll tweet this as well, at Rock Radio WIMS. I am at Radio Jim Ryan. 
And uh, be sure to tune in the next two weeks, this Sunday night, a week from tonight, as we begin part one of a two-part series looking back at the music of the Fillmore East and the Fillmore West. Thanks for joining me on the Rock and Roll Radio program. My name is Jim Ryan. It's Sunday night. Good luck, Monday morning. Monday morning.